Listeners beware, you're in for a scare. This episode, Alicia Ward in TikTok. You're dead. Alicia, hello and welcome. Hi! I'm Troy J. Malcolm and my guest today is Alicia. They are TikTok amazing. Oh my god. They've got an incredible Instagram. They do cosplay. They do costumes. Yeah. They have acted and performed in a variety of split television things before. And they're back Aww. now for I'm, Pick a Path Podcast. I'm here. I'm alive. This is great and exciting and I'm very tired. Let's do this! Woo! Woo! <laughs> so... Pick a Path podcast is obviously a podcast where we take... You know, it's a podcast? It is. That's why the microphone's here. It's not just you and I talking to ourselves in a room. Oh, it's... Um, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. Saying. Currently, we're taking the R.L. Stein Give Yourself Goosebumps novels, and we are doing Let's Plays of these books. Oh so my God, yes. this is TikTok You're Dead. I'm going to hand it to you so you can have a look and just tell us what you think about the cover. Well, it's pretty trippy, and this very scared-looking child looks like they're going to fall to their death, which is kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. Because the clock is laughing at them. And my favourite part of this entire cover is the fact that it's shiny in the background. Right, the holographic covers are beautiful. Holographic covers, that's all I care about. Like, let the kid die. Just give me more holographic covers on books. Thank you. Good drag name, holographic. Holographic, yeah. Um... (laughs) So, obviously, there are over 20 different scary endings in these novels, and we'll see which ones you come up against today. Oh, God, I'm going to die. Just, I can go in knowing that I'm going to die, and I'm okay with that. You're okay with that? I'm okay with that. Good, as long as you're okay with it, then I guess we can go ahead, see what happens. And it's time for me to read this story to you. So ready to die. (laughs) You okay there, Charlie? Yeah, so, I'm just so ready to die. Ready to go. What a crummy vacation. You, your little brother Denny, and your parents have come to New York City for Christmas vacation. You thought you'd get to do a lot of cool things, like visit the Statue of Liberty, ride to the 102nd floor of the World Trade Center, and ice skate at the Rockefeller Center. Instead, your parents are museum freaks. Dead things, cool books. It's entertaining, your mother says as she drags you into the Museum of Natural History. Oh my god, mom. Take Denny. Leave me alone. (laughs) It's educational. Your dad declares as he shows you a collection of ancient pottery. It's boring, you say, but no one listens. And the worst part is that you're supposed to be in charge of your little red-haired brother, Denny. Oh, gross. He's (laughs) red-haired. Only Denny doesn't want anyone to be in charge of him. You're not the boss of me. You little shit. You follow your parents through the Museum of Natural History. At first, it is kind of interesting. You really like the dinosaurs. Wait till you see what's in this room! Your mother cries. (laughs) And the first option you're being given is go to page two. Well, I think this is a hard choice. It is a tough one. I would like to kick Denny and go to page two. (laughs) Kicked. You rush to the next room expecting something exciting. But your mum is standing in front of a sundial. Isn't this wonderful? She exclaims. An exhibit on time! Great, you think. A whole room full of clocks. Boring. Then Denny gives you a karate kick in the back of the leg. That little shit! It's because you kicked him between the pages. You know what? He deserved it. How? You cry. Stop it! You're not the boss of me, he says smugly. Yes, I am. You reply, punching him in the arm. Yeah. He whines and complains to your parents. You can't win. I'm thirsty, Denny says now. You can see he's eaten almost half a bag of gummy bears in less than a minute. Can you find a drinking fountain for Denny, dear? Your mum asks without taking her eyes off a grandfather clock. You grab Denny's hand, but Denny pulls away and runs off down the hallway. You follow him. The hallway twists and turns, but there's no sign of either Denny or a water fountain. But near the end of the hall, you see a sign on a door. Warning. Dangerous experiment inside. This door must be kept locked at all times. Turn to page three. Right, turn to page three. We're going to do it. You know, 
this is like every horror movie ever where a little shit runs away and gets into trouble and I'm the one that's going to suffer for it so mm -hmm. maybe he should just die and I can survive and it's currently playing like every book ever where you go from page one to page two to page three <laughs> wait that's how you read books yeah sometimes I mean I just read the ending and then go oh how did we get here <laughs> Read it backwards, like wow. Read it backwards and watch it like unfold into nothing. <laughs> re refold? No. Re re <laughs> Dangerous experiment. What does that mean? You wonder. <laughs> I think I know what it means. <laughs> you notice that the door is slightly open. Oh no, Denny must have run in there. You think. You push the door open wider oh, no. and peek in. There's no sign of Denny. Shut the door. Walk away. <laughs> A tall, skinny man with long white hair tied in a ponytail is bent over a computer. The computer is hooked up to a big, strange-looking clock. Between the computer and the clock is a large square contraption that looks like a picture frame. You can hear the computer and the clock beeping and pinging. It's about time you... No, I'm not going to use that voice. <laughs> it's about time you got here, the tall man says, straightening up. I'm Dr. Peebles. Peebles? <laughs> You must be the volunteer. Actually, I'm looking for, you start to say, there's no time to waste, Dr. Peebles interrupts. I'm ready to start the experiment. Come on over while I, here, he says. He places a chain around your neck. On the end of the chain is something that looks like a stopwatch. A very, very odd stopwatch with a complicated looking dial and four big knobs. Are you ready? Dr. Peebles asks. Turn to page four. Mint! Mint! Thanks, Denny. Uh, any kind of, like, preliminary ideas or suggestions as to what you think's going to happen? I mean, I am a fully grown adult, and my only thought right now is lol balls. <laughs> four knobs on the box. There's <laughs> four knobs on the box! <laughs> I can't even speak English. Oh my god. This is totally a great idea. Just, yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. Ready for what? You ask. Why, to travel in time, of course, he replies. You'll be the first human in history to use my travelling chronometer. Chronometer, you echo? What's that? He points to the stopwatch around your neck. I don't have time, you start to say, but he interrupts again. Of course you have time, Dr. Peebles goes on. It doesn't matter how long you remain in the past or the future. When you return to the present, it will be the same moment that you left. It will be as if you were never gone at all. How does this work? You ask, pointing to the stopwatch. It's easy. Press the button on the left side to travel to the past. Press the button on the right for the future. To return to the present, press the top button and the bottom button at the same time. Cool, you think. What if this guy's invention really works? Travelling in time would be awesome. There's no time to waste, Dr. Peebles says. I'm ready to begin the experiment now. Turn to page five. Oh my god. We're going to a fifth page in chronological order. Oh yes. You think for a moment. Dr. Peebles obviously believes you're someone else, but a trip through time sounds like a lot of fun. More fun than staring at crummy old bowls all day. And since you'll return at the exact same time you left, You'll still be able to find Denny and return to your parents before they know anything is wrong. On the other hand, Denny can get into a lot of trouble very fast, and your parents will blame you if anything happens. Mint. Make a decision now. Do you want to travel in time, or should you look for your brother first? Ugh. Your options are choosing to volunteer for Dr. Peebles experiment, or staying and looking for Denny. Alicia, this is where we learn about you as a person. <laughs> I think we've already learned about me as a person. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, we've learned enough. Uh, we've learned enough, and he destroyed. Okay, um, screw Denny. Yeah. And he's a little shit. He so is. I also do not trust Mr. Peebles. Mm. He seems like the type that is going to stab me if I'd be like, mm, can we hang on a minute? Yeah. So I'm just going to travel in time, I think. You're going to... Accept Dr. Peebles' experiment offer, and you're going to start travelling through time. I am indeed. We're going to get to page 71. Yes, this is how we read books. Yeah, that's right. Get that ASMR. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's go. Spine tingling. So great. 
I'm ready to travel through time, you tell Dr. Peebles. Good, the white man. Nope. <laughs> These white men are dangerous. Good, the white-haired man replies. He punches some numbers into the computer keyboard. The computer starts to hum. The square doorway between the clock and computer fills with a strange shimmering glow. The chronoport is almost ready, the scientist says, pointing to the frame. I only need to adjust. But before he can continue, you hear pounding footsteps. You turn to see Denny racing towards you. Oh no. Denny, you cry. He's headed straight for the chronoport. You can't go in there. You're not the boss of me, Denny yells. He runs straight through the glowing frame. There's a soft before he disappears completely. Oh no, Dr. Peebles cries. He went before I made the final settings. If you don't bring him back within two hours of real time, he'll disappear into timelessness forever. <laughs> Can I leave him there? <laughs> You're like, ah, oh, sucks to be you, man. Hand oh, back. no. <laughs> what a shit. Hand back the stopwatch and leave. Race on to page 47. Oh my god. You know what I should have done? Is looked Denny dead in the eye and be like, Oh my god, go in there! <laughs> you would have stopped dead in his tracks. Reverse You're psychology, right. that's You're how right. we do it. Ah, uh, oh, I'm an idiot. What? You cry. You stare at the scientist. Your parents are going to ground you for life if you lose Denny. Notice how I don't care about Denny. It's just how my parents are going to react. <laughs> You'll have to travel in time to find him, Dr. Peebles tells you. I'd better make those adjustments to the chronoport so you don't disappear into timelessness too. You stare at the scientist as he fiddles with the time machine. You can't believe it. This guy is really serious. When you find your brother, you must be touching each other before you use the chronometer. Otherwise, the device will only bring one of you back. Oh no, what a shame. <laughs> no problem, you say. But where did Denny go? The future or the past? There's no way to know whether he's gone forward in time or back, Dr. Peebles replies. You'll have to guess. You touch the chronometer around your neck. It began measuring real time, the moment Denny disappears. Already the seconds are ticking by. You have to decide, are you more likely to find Denny in the past or in the future? <laughs> oh my god. I'm assuming because this is a natural history museum it's more likely that the setting should be in the past. So I'm going to go to the past. Also, the robots will kill me if I go to the future. So I'm going to go to the past. That's some great reasoning, Alicia. Thank you, thank you. I try to logic out every step that yep. I'm going to take. So you're going to check out some real natural history. Some by real natural Naturally history. going to the historical past on page 44. <laughs> I'll look for my brother in the past, you tell Dr. Peebles. Fine! The scientist replies. Why do I like announcing it to this guy? He doesn't care. <laughs> He's a scientist. <laughs> he punches another set of numbers into the computer. Now step right through the chronoport, Dr. Peebles instructs you. And good luck! You approach the shimmering frame and enter it. You feel a strange tingling sensation. Everything appears hazy, as if you were underwater. A second later, you see two paths ahead of you in the mist. Wow. Wow. At the end of the left-hand path, you squint to see a tall stone castle in the distance. A knight in shiny armour on a white horse rides towards it. At the end of the right-hand path, there's a swamp with tall, strange-looking trees towering over it. Moving among the trees is, can it be, a dinosaur? Which path did your brother choose? Which one will you take? Quick. I mean, Denny totally went to see a dinosaur <laughs> because he's a little shit and dinosaurs are so cool! Let's show me the dinosaurs. You're gonna go check out the dinosaurs? I'm gonna check out the dinosaurs! We're heading to page 11. I'm so excited. Denny loves dinosaurs! You decide to explore the swamp where you saw the dinosaur. You're sure Denny went that way. As you move towards the swamp, Tall, fern-like vegetation surrounds you. Your feet sink into the thick, mucky water. Through the trees, you can see huge shapes moving about. Real dinosaurs! Cool, you think. This is just like Jurassic Park. Only better. Whoa, R.L. Stein. Just like shading. Oh, it's a real shader. 
The dinosaurs are red, blue, green, and lavender. As what? colorful as birds. Barney! <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I love you. You love me. Nearly looks Clarice, a three eyed, no horn, walking purple vegan. Oh my god. Flashbacks. Horror flashbacks. <laughs> Some dinosaurs are the size of dogs and cats. Others' dinosaurs are bigger than a house. They're all munching on leaves and weeds. You're about to move closer when a tremendous noise shakes the ground. The trees sway as the rumbling grows louder and louder. You peer through the giant ferns towards a grassy plain. Your eyes grow wide. You can't believe it. Lumbering towards you is... A Tyrannosaurus Rex. If you dare, go on to page 65. Yeah! <laughs> Alicia dares. Alicia dares. Alicia wants to see the T-Rex. Now, you said you wanted to die. Have you given any thought to how you want to die? If I could get eaten by the T-Rex, that would be so cool. Oh my god. What did you do today? Eaten by a T-Rex. Eaten by a T-Rex. I mean, if I had the option to burn to death or freeze to death, freeze to death is comfortable, but burning to death is like going out like a boss. That's how I'm going to go. <laughs> I mean, I guess you're right. <laughs> the huge Tyrannosaur towers over the other dinosaur. It's bigger than you've ever imagined. Its teeth are as long and sharp as carving knives. The enormous creature lets out a roar as it crosses the grassy plain. You freeze. Your heart pounds in terror. Yeah, okay. The other dinosaurs all start to run away. But one, who is grazing on ferns, is slower than the others. The Tyrannosaur easily catches up to it and tears off the small dinosaur's head in one bite. <laughs> God, I wish that were me. <laughs> then the Tyrannosaur swings its head and stares straight at you. You take off as fast as you can. The Tyrannosaur follows, closer and closer. Ahead is a swampy patch of land. You race towards it. Something smaller sitting in the middle of the swamp. It's Denny. Yes! But what's he doing? Why isn't he moving? Oh, you, quick you glance back over your shoulder. The dinosaur is still right behind you. Denny, you call out. Run! I can't! He yells back. I'm stuck in quicksand! Yes! I am so good at this book! <laughs> Help your brother on page 110. Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, I should. That's what a <laughs> decent older sibling would do. You reach the swamp and grab Denny's hands. With all your might, you pull, but Denny is completely stuck. You pull Denny again. This time he panics. He grabs wildly at you. The chronometer flies off the chain around your neck and into the mud. Denny! Now the Tyrannosaur is only a few yards away. Its terrible face is so close. You can see its sharp pointed teeth and smell its hot, stinking breath. The dinosaur roars, shaking the nearby trees. You yank Denny one more time. With a loud he's freed from the quicksand. But now the Tyrannosaur is only a few feet away. It opens its mouth wide and stretches its fierce claws towards you. Frantically, you look around for the chronometer You've got to get back to the present. But there's no trace of the stopwatch. It's been sucked into the mud. Should you try to dig the chronometer out of the muck, or try to run away from the Tyrannosaur, which will you choose? Can I yeet Denny at the T-Rex <laughs> while I method? dig? Like, oh no. See, these are the options where I immediately go to die. So Alicia, are you digging for the chronometer, or you, do you think you can escape the Tyrannosaur? Yeah, I'm gonna dig for the chronometer and just yep. hope that the T-Rex gets stuck in the mud <laughs> and dies. <laughs> or goes for Denny first. Or goes for Denny, like go for Denny, he's the one who caused all these problems. Mm -hmm. Like, I could be at home right now just vibing, but no, I'm here for Denny, red-headed bastard. You've got to find the chronometer. You stick your arm deep into the quicksand, you feel around with your fingers, Nothing. Suddenly, the Tyrannosaurus Rex lets out a roar. You plunge both hands into the quicksand. Beside you, Denny drops to his hands and knees to search too. You sift frantically through the mud. The dinosaur comes closer and closer. He reaches out one claw. Then he lets out a tremendous sound. It's a burp from his earlier feast. A gigantic burp as loud as an explosion. 
The force of the burp knocks both you and Denny over. The two of you pitch forward and get right into the quicksand. Are we gonna drown? <laughs> oh no, you're both being pulled down, down, down into the quivering muck to meet the end. <laughs> It's a pretty good death. A pretty damn good death. I mean, I was going to square up against the T-Rex, but because of Denny, I died. Yep. See, it's all Denny's fault. It is. And, I mean, a good death. You're not unhappy with your death so far. No. But this is Pick a Path Podcast, which means you get a second life. You get to come back, have another go. La gasp! And you have made four choices so far. Yeah. And you can choose which of those choices to go back to and continue your journey. I want to stay with the T-Rex. <laughs> I'll give you a quick refresher on what options you can choose. Okay. Your first choice was whether or not to volunteer for Dr. Peebles' experiment or to stay and look for Denny. Then you had to choose whether to travel to the future or go to the past. Then you had to choose whether to run towards the night in the castle or to check out the dinosaur. And most recently... You had to choose between digging for the chronometer, which led to your death, yeah. or escaping the Tyrannosaur. Which of those options do you want to go back in time, just like this book allows you to do, Oh my god! and do differently? It's such a hard choice, because I feel like it'd be more interesting if I went to the future or something, but I want to stay with the T-Rex really, really badly. <laughs> you absolutely can. You can go back to any choice you want. This is your podcast episode. It's my podcast episode. So screw everyone, I'm going to run away from the T-Rex, and maybe this time I can yeet Denny at the T-Rex and go back and find the crew. Or, you know, just start my new life as this awesome cave woman, man, <laughs> non-gender specific child that is in an R.L. Stein book. <laughs> right, I, I looked at you like... Are you having trouble deciding what your <laughs> gender is right now, Alicia? We can talk about that. It doesn't seem like a pick I want to stay accurate to the book, but I want to stay true to me as well. <laughs> and it's just a hard choice. Don't you hate it when you have to become a non-binary RL sign <laughs> kid? It just happens. It does happen. Like, it shit happens. Yeah. I'm in the past being chased down by a T-Rex because, you know, that's cool in the Jurassic Park. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out how the T-Rex claw is, like coming out to grab me when it can't go this far. Like, T-Rexes can't masturbate, so... <laughs> because of their big head and little arms. Exactly! So how is it meant to get at me before it bites me? It's like... Their big head doesn't affect the <laughs> masturbating, I assume. <laughs> and it can't reach. So instead it burped and you blew you into the quicksand. Yeah, so like, fuck me, I guess. Yeah. You've got to get away from the fierce Tyrannosaur. You grab Denny's hand and take off through the trees. The dinosaur chases you, but it's too big to fit easily between the trees. You and Denny zig one way and zag another. Finally, the two of you crouch down behind a thick tree trunk. You both gasp for air. In the distance, you can see the Tyrannosaur. It glances all around. At last, it lets out a defeated-sounding roar and ambles off. Way to go! Denny shouts. You and your brother high-five each other. Can I just high-five his face really hard? <laughs> <laughs> now all you have to do is go back to the swamp and find the chronometer. But which direction is it? Oh, no. You've done so much twisting and turning, zigging and zagging, you aren't sure where the swamp is. Luckily, Denny seems to remember the way. You follow him through the forest and finally come to the swampland. As you rush over to the pool of quicksand, all you can think about is the time ticking by. How much longer before Denny disappears forever? Turn to page 12. So Denny was useful for something this time. Yeah, but the T-Rex is gone. Yeah. You did get a little bit longer with it, but, you know, he is gone. I'm really sad, but, like, I kind of outsmarted a T-Rex. Yeah, you I'm did. I'm pretty sure that's hard. I mean... Not many people alive today can say they've outsmarted a T-Rex. I know, just look at Jurassic Park. Like, mm -hmm. at least I wasn't on the toilet when I died. I went out like a boss. Burp to death. Burp to death <laughs> into Burp the quicksand. Death. Yeah. You reach into the pool of quicksand. Wow, deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you just took a sip of water as well. Nearly got spitted on. It's fine. 
You reach into the pool of quicksand and feel around for the chronometer. Suddenly, the ground begins to shake violently. Oh, no. Under your feet, the earth sways and a deafening rumble fills the air. What's going on? You yell to Denny. Smoke pours out off the top of a nearby mountain. Oh, no! A volcano, you shout. A second later, the top of the volcano blows off. Red hot lava pours out. Even though the volcano is at least a half mile away, you can feel the heat against your skin. Large rocks glowing white hot begin to land in the swamp like bomb. Watch out! Denny shrieks. Shut up, Denny. Duck! You cover your head and throw yourself on the ground. Whoom! A rock just misses you. It splashes into the mud and throws up a shower of mud and water and something shiny. <gasps> Could it be? Yes, it's the chronometer. Betcha. Quickly you crawl over and scoop it up. It's covered with mud. Desperately you feel for the buttons on the side of the chronometer. Your fingers close on two of them. Press the buttons on page 96. Oh no, am I going to leave Denny behind? Because that would be really funny, but like a lot of effort. <laughs> a lot of effort. We <laughs> now I have to go back and find him again before he dies. You press the button under your middle finger and immediately feel a tingling sensation. When it stops, you're standing near small trees. In the distance, long-necked dinosaurs are grazing on some plants. Dinosaurs? How far back in time have you gone? You don't have time to think about it when Denny says, Look at these weird rocks! Denny's standing next to six round, speckled boulders. They're not rocks, you realise. They're eggs. Dinosaur eggs. As you stare at the rocks, you hear a steady tapping sound. Then one of them begins to crack. Velociraptor. Wow, you cry. I think this egg's about to hatch. I want to do something else. <sighs> Denny whines. I'm bored. He grabs the chronometer and runs off. Denny, come back. You scream, but he keeps running. Oh, this little shit. You're going to have to go after him. But if you do, you'll miss the coolest thing that's happened since you got here. What should you do? <sighs> do you want to watch the egg hatch? Or do you chase Denny? I'm going after Denny. Chasing after Denny? You're skipping the egg hatching? You look really yeah. unpleased. I'm not pleased because the responsible thing is to go after this little shit and get him back before he ceases to exist. Mm -hmm. But like... I'm pretty sure if I stay and watch the eggs, it's going to be a velociraptor or something, and mummy's going to come along and devour me again, so... It happens. It happens, and that would be a boss way to go, but I'd like to live through one of these books for once, mm -hmm. you know, without cheating. Yep, yep. Right, having your fingers and stuck in every single page of the every book. Every single page. Well, you're going to leave page 96, which is a backwards 69, <laughs> and chase after Denny. Denny. <laughs> you take off after your brother, but by the time you reach the tree where you last saw him, he's gone. Of course. Then something on the ground near the tree catches your eye. It's the chronometer. <laughs> Bye, but, bitch. But where's Denny? And why did he leave the chronometer behind? You scoop up the device and run your fingers over the buttons. <laughs> Is he gone? Has he ceased to exist? <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> Denny said he wanted to do something else. He was probably bored with the past and decided to go to the future. Oh, no. You quickly press the button on the right and feel a tingling sensation. A purple mist surrounds you. Everything turns blurry. You close your eyes, hoping your dizziness will pass. You open your eyes again and blink twice. A futuristic looking city looms in the distance. Enter the city on page 101. No choice about whether or not you're going to the future. No, just like... Pretty you're sure you're doing Denny, it. If Denny went to the future, how do you leave the chronometer behind? I'm pretty sure he's just dead at this point. Well, might as well have an adventure. Bye! I did think that, you know, because they said you had to both be touching to use the chronometer. Yeah. But then, like, it didn't specify that you and Denny touched each other when you went further back in time yeah, just then. Yeah, and so it's just like... Did I leave him behind? Did I leave him behind? Because I didn't get a choice in that. That'd be really funny. Mm -hmm. And then he ran off and maybe used it, but left the chronometer behind? How do you use it and not touch it? Exactly. So many questions. You decide to go towards the futuristic city. 
All around you are buildings made of shiny metal and glass. Cars with wings fly above your head. The streets are empty and clean with no litter, not even a gum wrapper. Wow. <laughs> it's not the future. <laughs> <laughs> Is this New York in the future? It certainly looks different from the one you're visiting in the present. You're about to start looking for Denny when a hand you're about to start looking for Denny. Sorry, I had a stroke there. Apparently. You're about to start looking for Denny when a hand closes on your shoulder in an icy grip. Human? A hollow sounding voice says, You're under arrest. You whirl around. Gripping your shoulder is a shiny metal robot with a policeman's badge welded to its chest. Knew it. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I told you, death by robot. Oh, right. <laughs> I was like, by human, you're like, oh, oh man. that's a robot police oh, officer. Man. I recognize the voice. Oh, man. No wonder every... Oh. The robot's face... <laughs> Explodes, making that sound, and I win. <laughs> the robot's face is expressionless, and it's holding something that looks like a laser gun. No wonder everything is so clean and quiet, you think. The city is run by machines. Everyone's dead. That's the only way to stop climate change is kill all humans. Don't, Don't you know, know that humans, humans aren't allowed on the streets? The human <laughs> demands. Nope, the robot demands. <laughs> no, 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 I came from another place, you quickly reply. I don't know your rules. Please give me another chance. That's, That's for the judge to decide, the robot says. Come with me. Hmm. Hmm. Turn to page 89. 89. <laughs> yeah, 89. Yeah, 89. <laughs> yeah, that means nothing. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no. You follow the robot into a big glass walled building. He leads you to a courtroom. A shiny robot dressed in black sits behind a tall desk. The judge, you realize. Are yeah. the robots wearing people clothes? Because I kind of dig that idea. I would like to, yeah, just in normal human just like, in outfits. Just in normal but, like, human outfits, but they're shiny metal robots. Like I'm imagining Futurama robots, yeah. but in clothes. But in people clothes. Yeah. That would be so cool. <laughs> you are accused of appearing in the streets, human. The judge says, how do you plead? G Guilty, your honor, you say. But I didn't. Silence! The judge cuts you off. Yes, right. Yes, right. There are no excuses for punishment. You may have your choice. You will be sentenced to school or to the zoo. School? Zoo? What kind of punishment is this? To find out, make a choice. Would you like to get sentenced to school or would you like to go to the zoo? I want to go to the zoo. Yeah? go to the zoo. Well, we're turning to page 55 to go to the zoo. I mean like thinking Denny wise, yeah. he's a dumbass. So he'd be like, I don't want to go to school. School's boring. I want to go to the zoo. Right. How about you? You. You. You can go too. Yay! You love the zoo. What a weird punishment, oh, you my... think. Oh my god, it's a people zoo. I can already tell. As the police robot takes you away in a flying car, soon you zoom through the zoo gates. Giraffes, elephants, tigers, and antelopes run around oh, the no, grounds. Oh no, I'm gonna be eaten! <laughs> Instead of bars, a shimmering transparent force field separates the animals from the viewers. Oh no, I'm gonna be human food. You will remain here, the robot announces, stopping in front of an exhibit that looks like a living room with a couch, chairs, and a TV. Oh, I'm not going to be eaten! The robot yanks the chronometer off your neck. Give that back, you shout, but the robot ignores you. It aims its laser gun at the force field around the exhibit. The field dissolves, and the robot pushes you into the exhibit. Word. Wait a minute, you protest. You can't leave me here. I'm sure, sure you will be comfortable. The robot tells you as it zaps its gun again, and the force field goes back up. No, you cry trying to push through the force field. Then a group of robots approach. Two little ones point and make strange coughing noises. Sorry. It's just like, it's just missing. What are they pointing at? Find out on page 102. I hate you, Jenny. You're the pain of my existence.
existence right now. Look at this one, says a little robot. It gazes at the sign in front of the force field. It's the couch potato exhibit. Yes! The small robot goes on. It begins making the strange noises again. It's not for life to laugh at the humans. One of the bigger robots says, But mommy, replies the little one, It is so funny looking. Here, human, it adds. It shoves something through the force field. You lean down to pick up a candy bar. Look, says the little one. It picked up the candy. It is eating it. The small robot pushes another candy bar through the force field. With a sinking feeling, you realise that you're stuck here for good. But cheer up. At least when the little robots visit, you'll get to eat plenty of candy. Yeah. The end. I think that's not even a bad ending in my opinion. That's pretty sweet. I get to sit on my ass. Oh, As no. a couch potato. I don't even have like Skyrim or Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I just realised that I'm literally stuck on a couch waiting for the robots to go <coughs> their way along and give me candy bars. But I told you I was going to lose, didn't I? Right. You did say you were going to die. And... and I did die, but I also lived as a couch potato. Which isn't the worst way to go. No, it's not. Also, fuck Denny. Yeah, no. You didn't You didn't save Denny, but hey, you didn't need to save Denny. Fuck Denny him. was kind of an awful child. The worst, worst child. child. He was red haired. Um, exactly. He has no soul, obviously. <laughs> and he went to the past. What kind of child chooses to go to the past over the future? Although the future didn't really have much going for it. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the only way the planet's going to survive is if we just go fuck it, let the robots run. <laughs> just, you know what? No, we give up. Let we the robots up. wear yeah, people clothes and take over. The thing is, if the robots wear people clothes, maybe they need people to make the clothes, and I will still have a job in the future. <laughs> as, what, what, I was going to say as a costume, as a fashion man? Costumeer. 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 Ooh, as a costumeer. Yes. You'll be able to make the costumes for the robots. I will make Shakespearean costumes Ooh. for the robots. Oh, I do love the idea of, like, robots to in be full or Victorian. Not to be. <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> It's like the number and letter though, like to be or <laughs> to not, be, to, to be. be, does not compute. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Poor to be, I loved him. Aww. Well, Alicia, thank you so much for joining me for Pick a Path podcast. Oh, thank you, Did... Troy, for having me. No, I love sitting down with friends and getting to read them a book. And... I mean, it was really funny. I'm glad. <laughs> I had a great time. But I kind of wish I saw more deaths for Denny specifically, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he kind of deserved it and had it coming. He had it coming. Put him. Yeah, that's what I was also hoping for. I was hoping to see a little bit more Denny death. I guess it's a little bit like... I mean, it's a kid's book. You're supposed to care book. about your younger siblings, but yep, I'm in yep. my late 20s, and like, it's my brother's birthday to get it today and together I greet, together and i greeted him on the phone and all i said was like you're old even though he's younger than me right so like that's that's how i treat my younger well, sibling to celebrate your younger sibling's birthday you got to a fall into a quicksand pit with your brother i got burped into a you got <laughs> burped into a quicksand pit which i don't know if i told someone on the street oh i hung out with alicia she got burped into a quicksand pit They'd and, be died. Like, and died with their younger siblings. They'd be like, yeah, that sounds like hanging out with Alicia. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's how I do every day. And then there was robots and people clothes and they went to the zoo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It only makes sense. It does. Well, thank you so much, Alicia, for joining me. I hope you enjoyed TikTok You're Dead by R.L. Stein, the second Give Yourself Goosebumps book. Of course, there are over 20 spooky endings in this book, and you only got to experience two of them, I meaning did. there's a whole bunch more in the book that you could experience, and you can at home as well if you support the official books and the author and Scholastic, who we are not affiliated with, because that would be spooky. I'm trying to figure out who that is. It's Scholastic. <laughs> oh, it's the book cup. Yeah, it's the publisher. Just yeah. like, oh, Scholastic. you know, my friend. My friend, Skull. Scholastic. Scholastic. Oh, he's such a bro. He is the broest of bros. The broest of bro town. Is there anything you would like to say to the audience or 
pitch slash plug before we head off? Well, first of all, I would like to apologise for my redheaded comments. I know redheads have souls. <laughs> it's just fun to mock fictional characters and stories. It's true. Both my younger siblings... I have three younger siblings, I can't say that. I have two younger siblings with red hair, and both of them claim to have souls, so... It claim to. There I go again. We are doing it as a comedic bit. We're not being serious. No. There's a lot worse things you can be than red-haired. Yeah, like dead. That's true. From a Tyrannosaurus Rex which burped you into a quicksand pig, and you had to die with... I just said pig. <laughs> quicksand pit pit and you had to die with, with the red-headed child uh, awful <laughs> full circle here we go I did think you were going to get locked in a zoo enclosure with your brother though and I am a little bit upset that it wasn't you and Denny locked in the same exhibit forever wouldn't that be like a fantastical but sad ending as if yeah. we were, like, it would actually be kind of depressing because it'd be like I want to do this and I'd be like well you can't because the robot said no right I'm good. <laughs> Or even if he was just, like, in the next enclosure, mm-hmm. that would have been great because there was force field, so I yeah. could see him. So you can see him. But yeah, he's... I could see him for the last remaining time that he would be alive. <laughs> oh, Oops. No. Poor Denny. Poor Not Denny's. really, though. <laughs> right, well, thank you again, Alicia. Thank you. You can check out Alicia on TikTok, Instagram, oh, God, their Facebook right. page, their YouTube, all the social medias. Oh, yeah, it's Twiggles. <laughs> We will link them in the description below. Check those out. And if you enjoyed this episode, rate it. Well. Yeah. And if not, well, fuck it. You just wasted, what, an hour of your time (laughs) listening to us talk. (laughs) You're never getting that time back. Exactly. Thank you again. And we'll see you next time on Pick a Path Podcast. Bye. Thanks for listening to Pick a Path Podcast. We release a new episode in the first week of every month. Well, hopefully. Next episode will be Beth Marriott in Trapped in Batwing Hall. Subscribe everywhere that podcasts are available and to the Split Television Productions YouTube channel. Bye!